Hey Flosstube, it's Megan, Georgia Girl Stitching here for episode number six. It is Friday, July 10th, I think, uh, in my new location down here in Auburn. I officially got moved in almost two weeks ago from Cincinnati. Uh, so since my last video, a lot has happened. <laughs> I had my birthday just a few days uh, after my video, which was wonderful. Thank you all so much for the wonderful birthday wishes and moving wishes and travel wishes and all of the good wishes. So I really appreciate that so much. I uh, had a really nice, really nice birthday. Uh, I worked for about half a day and then my best friend in Cincinnati, uh, she her apartment pool was open and we were planning to get dinner that night. So I left work and went to her place and hung out by the pool and stitched. It wasn't like the warmest of days, so I didn't actually get in the pool, but it was nice to just relax. And then she and I got ready and we had this girls night dinner planned um, at Capitol Grill. We, so in Cincinnati, there's this shopping area called Rookwood and it has all of these different restaurants and things and it's kind of close to my work and close to her apartment and so we would do like once a week we were eating our way through Rookwood where we would once a week meet for like a happy hour or something but we were saving Capital Girl for a special occasion so for and her birthday is also in June so we decided to make our joint birthday me going away kind of dinner at Capital and um, but beforehand, we went to Seasons 52 for like just a glass of wine and an appetizer. And while we were there, David and her boyfriend surprised me and showed up. It was so sweet. I was not planning to see him just because I was, you know, board studying and everything. Uh, it was a Wednesday night, you know, in the middle of the week. So, but while we we're in the middle of enjoying a glass of wine, these two handsome men walked in. <laughs> and so it was really fun. So our girls night turned into a, a you know double date and we just had a wonderful time. So that was really nice. And then he stayed through the weekend. Um, well, I guess through Friday, Saturday morning, cause then Saturday I <laughs> flew out and he drove home uh, down to Atlanta and we, uh, my parents and I, well, mom was already there. So dad and I drove down to uh, Destin, Fort Walton Beach, Okaloosa Island. I guess we technically stayed on Okaloosa Island, um, but spent most of our time in Destin and just had a wonderful weekend. And uh, we left on Wednesday and had a just, it was so nice to be at the beach and relax and no agendas and just chill. <laughs> so that was really nice. And then we drove back Wednesday picked up David in Auburn on our way up. And then Thursday morning, we loaded the four of us, our stuff and the two Huskies and my dad's Jeep Wrangler <laughs> and drove up to Cincinnati. Um, it was tight quarters, but we it was luckily only six hours, seven hours. And that was fun. But then we um, spent the next few days finishing packing me up enjoying Cincinnati. We are able to go to Keepsakes one more time and see Lynn and Candy and uh, Jen and Lenny and Susan and Barbara. It was so wonderful. We kind of had like one last little hurrah there. Um, and, and then we headed down to Auburn Sunday morning. So we left, crack it on, uh, you know, loaded the last few things into the U-Haul and then caravan down. David and I were in the U-Haul, mom was driving my car, the Liberty, and then dad was driving the Wrangler with the two dogs. And we caravaned all the way down to Auburn. It was like a 10 hour drive, I think, 10 and a half. And then as soon as we got here, we unloaded the U-Haul, unloaded the Liberty, unloaded the Wrangler. And then my, we had some dinner and kind of just put boxes where they needed to sort of go. And then my parents peaced out and went home, um, back the two hours back to Atlanta. So it was a very long day. Uh, we were exhausted, but successful. I uh, didn't have any breakage or, you know, no catastrophes. The Huskies did great. Um, so yeah, so overall it was a really <laughs> crazy, but really fun uh, 10 days. And then over the last two weeks, you know, just kind of getting settled in, all the boxes are unpacked and in their, pretty much their final locations. There's a couple places, a couple rooms I still need to officially organize. Um, we were able to rent a house from two, well, fourth years who have graduated. They, when they moved to Auburn, they actually bought a house and then they were renting it out to other VCOM students. 
And luckily Auburn uh, property is not super expensive. So we we're able to afford to rent out. It's a, it's a small house, but it's three bedroom and two bath. So it's a nice area for he and I to share because we're both coming from pretty large apartments to merging together. So a little apartment was not gonna do it for us. So luckily we were able to afford this. Um, so yeah, so I've just been kind of, we still have to do like decorations. That's the plan for this weekend. Um, and just kind of getting everything officially settled and in there because I start school on Monday. So not a whole lot of time to, it was enough time to really get comfortable. We have our routine. He cooks, I clean, works out very well. Um, we have Tank, his dog, I guess now our dog, um, living here for now and kind of just getting in the groove of everything. He's still studying for boards. He takes his test um, at the end of July and I officially get started on Monday. School's gonna look a little different these first few weeks because they, they want us to two week quarantine once we get here, um, but they're not requiring us to get here until July 13th, so which is technically the first day of school. So July 13th, those first two weeks, they're all online classes. Um, none of them are, there's like no attendance policy. It's just, you know, here are the lectures and watch them and start studying because the first test is the following Monday. So my first test is July 20th. My second test is that Friday, July 24th. And then it's uh, two to three tests every week from there on out. So we really hit the ground running in med school, I guess. <laughs> so Dave and I, I have my block calendar for the most part. Um, they're still making changes. And July 27th is when we officially can go on campus, but I still don't really know what that's gonna look like, what lectures and labs and all of that. So we're just um, learning as we go and we'll just see how it goes. It's kind of been the theme for 2020. Just, you know, make plans for maybe, maybe the next day, but that's probably as far as we can go. <laughs> so gonna really enjoy this weekend, relax and um, do some fun things. And then Monday, reality officially starts. So, but in the meantime, thought I would get this in and show you some stitching. So I, because my life's gonna be weird, different, busy, whatever, for the next X amount of years, I think for, you know, my stitching's gonna be kind of all over the place. So to kind of give us a baseline of where I am today, July 10th, before I start med school, um, I thought I'd do a whip parade and kind of get to show, you know, my current status. And then throughout, you know, my next, all my other videos until the next whip parade, you can kind of see. Also, actually, that gave me, I have an idea, a question for you guys. So I know a lot of floss tubers do, when they're showing a, a whip, they'll do a before photo so you can see where it was before, and then they show where it is now. Not all of them do though. And so I want to ask you, do you like that? Do you, would you like me now that I have a whip parade, I can take like a screenshot of where we currently stand. And then whenever I show it, but do you prefer that? Does it not really matter? You know, you, can you live without it? You know, so just want to kind of get your feedback on that. Cause if, you know, majority of you really like that and want that, you know, I can, I can start inserting that. So, but before I do that, I have an FFO and two finishes. So first is um, when I was at Keepsakes, I kind of, she had a couple more things for me. A couple things that you'd already seen, or one was my mom's FFO and then a couple other things. Um, uh, Zuka, she had re she had borrowed to get the right fabric for, so I got that back. But then this new thing is Aloha's finished. So I gave her this fabric and she was able, she mounted it, um, put it on, put it on the fabric and then put the screen cording around, which is just perfect. And then finish the back. Um, and I, I mentioned before, but what I'm going to do with this is for, um, our wedding next summer, this is going to be the welcome sign on the welcome sign. So, cause it says, Aloha, hello, um, and we're on a beach. So we're gonna, my dad had has found uh, wood that he's gonna make like a planked wood sign, paint it, stain it, and then this is gonna be at the top. And then my uncle, who's an artist, he's going to paint Aloha underneath, uh, not Aloha. He's gonna paint our last name, which is Axfords. So he's gonna paint the Axfords. 
and then our date underneath. And then that's gonna be our welcome sign at the wedding and then it'll eventually go in our house afterwards as part of the decor. So, so yeah, I got that done, absolutely love it. Barbara is a genius and perfect and all of the wonderful things. And then the long awaited, finally finished <laughs> walk on a beach. So I, I, Instagram has just not been a priority, unfortunately, to post a lot of these things. I, very, I don't even have photos of these things yet. Probably from this video will be screenshots. Um, but on, you know, my goal was to finish this while we were at the beach and, or no, no, no. My goal was to finish it during the beach trip. And that's an important distinction because I finished this when we were about an hour away from driving home, being home on our drive. So I did finish it during the trip. It just was not physically on the beach, um, but I'll get a close up here. It, I absolutely love it. I mean, it is one of my favorites for sure. Um, major pro tip though, do not save the fill until last. <laughs> which was my problem why it took me so dang long to finish this is it I mean but on the other hand though it was a nice travel piece it was a nice thing I could just do anywhere because I didn't need a pattern I could just you know fill it in as I went um you do need more than one skein of the linen um this is on 40 count uh 40 count sand and all the called for colors. The only changes I made were accidental modifications because the beach was not, um, is not technically, it should be two spaces over and it should line up with the on. But I had started it over and I was like, you know, it really doesn't bother me that much. So I just left it. Um, and honestly, I kind of like it offset. It kind of gives it a little, I don't know, gives it a little bit more dimension. The other finish I have, so that's Walk on a Beach by Erica Michaels on 40 Count Sand. The other finish I have is a haul, start, uh, whip, finish. It's not an FFO, but it is a finish. And y'all, I have been obsessed. This is the Summer Tray by Madame Chantilly. And I, I don't think I have ever been so obsessed with stitching a pattern. It has, the fact that I also was able to unpack boxes while stitching this is a miracle because I, here I'll do this close up now. Um, I had so much fun. There's so many little motifs. Each tray, you know, was just so fun to do. Um, and the colors are just perfect. Um, so yeah, I just absolutely love this. Uh, the, I made two changes. One is, I think I mentioned it in my last video that I was gonna do this, but I added an anchor, back stitched an anchor on the pot. Let's see if that'll focus. Um, and then the other one was the lighthouse. The light is supposed to be the start color. And I was like, but lighthouses are meant to be lit light. You know, so I, uh, and th that's how they help the boats and the everything find their way. So I changed it to one of the yellow colors. And so it's a lit lighthouse. But those are the only changes I made because this pattern is perfect and I love it so much. Um, the seagull and the flowers, these are beasts. These take a long time to do, but they were so fun. So, so I'm very excited about it. I have no idea how I'm gonna finish this. If anyone has any ideas, I would love to hear them. How to, I, I mean, I could frame it, obviously, but if you have any like fun finishing ideas, I would really love to hear them. Um, Cause I wanna do it, I would prefer to do it in like a way that, like I'm not gonna do a frame where I can switch out each season. That would be the easy option. But I, I don't know, I feel like these are so fun and so different that they should have kind of a different kind of finish um, that I'll just bring out each season, so love it. Uh, so that's that. So those are my two finishes. Nothing else is close to being finished. So, so was, hopefully that will last you a little while because it could be a while before I have another finish. Um, but there's that. So now I 
I think we'll go to the wet parade. And then afterwards, I'll do uh, stitchy kindness because I have a bit because I have amazing friends and um, a little bit of haul and then a couple shout outs and then, of course, my plans. So because I have some. So we will start. I'm going to start like oldest whip to newest whip just because I feel like that's the. I don't know. just makes sense to me to do it that way. So I'm going to start with that. I have my list with all my notes just to kind of make it easy. So if you see me looking down, that's what I'm doing. The first one is Celtic Christmas. I have been calling this Celtic Noel for too long, but it is technically called Celtic Christmas by Lavender and Lace. This is the what it will look like when it's done. And this is where I am at right now. Has not changed since last time I showed it. Haven't worked on it. Um, this is on 28 Count Sage by Color and Cotton, and I started this um, in November of 2019. I started it on Thanksgiving, and then I worked on it probably like for like a week, and then I went to Christmas stitching. So that's number one. I even ironed it all. Firstly, because it needed it. All, everything needed it. And then also, so it'll look nice for you. So, and you can actually see what I'm looking at. Next one is Winter by Cricut Collection. Again, this one hasn't changed since the last time I showed it, but so I have the N and the T mostly done and then the beginning of the snowman. Um, this is on 32 count pearl gray Belfast and I started this at the end of April this year. So the only change I've made so far is the hat is, um, it's technically supposed to be that uh, yellow color and then the greens at the bottom but I switched them just because green is more me and more if I had a hat like this which I don't because I don't go anywhere cold enough for one um if I had a hat like this I would want it to be more green than yellow so there's that one and then so all my Christmas stuff <laughs> I started early because the next one is reindeer roundup by prairie schooler um this one has been interesting because <laughs> And some more accidental modifications have happened to it. But this is where we're at right now. This is on a 32 count flax. Also started at the end of April when I was just itching for a new start and I had it ready to go. So um, accidental modification is uh, Santa's sleeve. Santa's a little poofier than uh, charted, but you know, jolly. Jolly July, Jolly Santa, you know, a little poofy. The other one I had was there were only eight reindeer on this pattern. And as I said before, there is no reindeer roundup without Rudolph. You gotta have a ninth one. So what I did is I made um, this guy Rudolph and added a red nose, which actually my dad had a good idea. He said I should put like a red bead on it. So it's like the actual like round red nose. So I will do that. I haven't worked on this since then, since he said that. So I haven't done that since then. But the other one, the reindeer, I then added down in the trees is where I got that other reindeer. So he's kind of chilling with Santa down there. Um, and he's just a flipped version of this guy. The other accidental modification is that there are three reindeer colors instead of two. I uh, misread one of the browns and put in this really light color. I think it's just supposed to be the two dark colors, but I had already done this big guy down here. And I was like, I am not ripping him out and starting him with the, the right quote unquote color. So I just made three. So I'm three or in each color. So really all I have left to do are the trees and the big house and the birds. That's all that's left in the pattern. Next one. Um, the, so the next few were my uh, mania starts. So I started Beachcomber by Carolyn Manning Designs. Oh, just absolutely love it. And this was also my first soiree into um, 40 count. So this is on 32, no, I just said 40 count, 40 count mallow. Uh, 40 count mallow. And this is as far as I got during, I started a little bit before Mania. I technically started at the very end of April. Um, and then I got that much done during my week of mania. So I got all the browns in so now I can start. And the next time I pick this up, I can work on all the blues and all the pretty blues and yellows and whites. So I'm excited about that. I kind of got the, the browns out of the way and my little Tigger 
to your needle minder. Um, so yeah, so love this. Excited to get back to it. Really easy, like nice stitching. Um, the next one that I started during Maina was actually Walk on a Beach, which is done. Yay. After that, um, because of Shiloh at X Stitch ND who got me into this, um, the next one I started was Patchwork Quaker by, okay, I'm going to try it. I'm still going to mess it up, but Stickadine von der Weinberg. I tried. Um, that's what it looks like, that his name, their name, name. And then this is the, uh, the pattern. I just love those colors and just the motifs. I absolutely fell in love with it. So she, and she and I actually started a sow, um, when she restarted the hers. So we are now doing the hashtag cause Quakers sow, um, which I'll have in the description box below. Uh, so cause Quaker sow. So if you're working on any Quaker, we, um, opened it to just anyone who loves working on Quakers cause Quakers. So quick, cause Quaker sow with, uh, Shiloh and I, and this is where I am at on it. I have officially gotten that first like row of motifs done. And so when I pick it back up, I can start down by the swan with the second row. Oh, I love it so much. I just, it's just so good. So many good colors. Those motifs are so fun to do. Um, and this is on a 40 count platinum. So yeah, so hashtag Coast Quakers. The next one um, is Celtic Summer. This is what the original looks like. I know I've explained this a lot, but in case you're new, here it is again. Uh, this is the by Lavender and Lace, and she, um, I've already finished Celtic Autumn and Celtic Winter, which uh, Barbara is keeping for now, and she's going to hand cut the mats out for me when for me to get them framed. So. This is Celtic Summer, the next one in the set. And while she is gorgeous, she does not represent my kind of summer, my colors for summer. Some of them, like those teals, yes. But the gold, the purple, just not in the flower basket, like just wouldn't represent, you know, our house for summer. So I was trying to think like, okay, what would be a conversion for summer? There's a whole Facebook group, L and L Celtic Ladies Conversion Facebook group. Um, and people will post their conversions and I didn't really, uh, connect with any of the ones that were listed there. So another few gorgeous ones, but just not for me. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a shot and convert it myself. And I am converting it to, um, because we're getting married in the summer next June, uh, I'm converting it to our wedding colors and our wedding color accents. So we are having a teal blue, navy blue, our two main wedding colors, silvers and whites as our accents, and then a lot of greenery as well. Um, I mean, well, I mean, flat white flowers, blue flowers, and then a lot of greenery. So here's where I've gotten on that so far. And I had struggled with the, the teal blues, but I think I've settled. I'm happy. Now we just got to do it. So here's where she is so far. So I've gotten her sleeve and then starting on that bottom part of her dress. And then I did get a couple, like one of those motif, big motifs in with the stitching just because I wanted to see how the colors play together. And I think it looks great. I'm excited to keep going. Um, the silver metallics and the beads are just going to be so fun. So I'm excited to keep working on her. She's going to be one of my focus pieces soon because I really want to, I really want to see more of her come together. And I would like to have her done by next June, which could be a struggle with, you know, hashtag med school. So we're going to, but she's going to come out to play some more. Um, but that's where we're starting from now. The next two are my current full coverage pieces. Um, and while they are not, hey, oh, she stitched on um, 28 count Lugana Salt Rock by Color and Cotton. Sorry. Next two are my full coverage pieces, and while they are not Hades, they are, um, you know, still full coverage. So I, um, I'm trying the diagonal block by block stitching, and st I used to do like just page finish and would cross country across the page, which totally still works for some people. But I don't know. I wanted to try something new, cause especially with some of the one of the ones I'm going to show you. They the pattern is very hard to read. I mean, there's just so many colors all over the place, and it, it's. 
and I don't have Pattern Keeper. We're an Apple, well, I'm an Apple person. David is still Android, but he does not have a tablet. I don't have a tablet, so I can't get back Pattern Keeper yet. Um, not quite ready to spend the money for that yet. So I, um, so because of that, I'm like, let's try the block by block because I can see a hundred stitches okay. So let's see. But this first one is um, Hammock at Sunset by Stitch X Cross Stitch Designs. I got this off of everythingcrossstitch.com. Um, I don't think 123stitch has it, has it, but I know everything does. So that's the final picture, and this is how far I am. So, um, what's nice about this one, it's not huge. So, you know, each block, you know, shows something, which is really nice. Um, so we're getting the start of that hammock going. And I'm really enjoying the block by block. Like, I feel like I, I feel accomplished when I finish one of those 100 stitch blocks. Um, so I'm really enjoying it. The other one is for David. He requested this one and it is uh, Starry Night Over the Rhone. Um, this one is a restart because <laughs> I originally wanted to try it on Navy Blue Ada. Oh, that's my math, trying to figure out how much I needed. Um, I originally wanted to do it on Navy Blue Ada because I thought about how like sometimes the fabric can show through. So if I did it on white, I was concerned with all these dark areas, you would get a lot of white coming through and I wanted it to be very full coverage. But the, so I got Navy Blue Aided and it was so hard to work with just because it was so dark and I don't, at the time at least, I didn't have a great setup for like being able to shine light or something. I mean, people had great tips and I really appreciate it, but it just wasn't fun and I wasn't enjoying it. And I'm like, I'm never gonna finish this if I'm not enjoying the fabric. So I was talking to Rocio at Cocahamas and she had the idea, she told me, she's, cause she was working on a full coverage at the time too. And she was like, just do 18 count two strands and you'll have no, you won't see the fabric come through. You'll be able to see where you're working. You'll enjoy it a lot more. Just just, you know, do the 18 count with something that's not white still. It's so like light oatmeal or eight, you know, on Ada. And so I took her advice and I um, am doing this one um, as well. And it is so much easier to work on. I'm absolutely loving it. I already got one star coming in. So again, it's not huge. So, you know, so we've got a star coming in. Um, <clears throat> You know, and that's only one, two, three, four, five, six hundred. I say only, only six hundred stitches. But I actually worked on this yesterday. Um, I was able to get these three hundred in in like two hours. You know, so two and a half maybe. Um, and then plus what I did over here. So I'm hoping this will go faster now that I really have. I love the parked threads. That really helps a lot too. So I start out with when I start a new block. I start with all the all of the parked threads and get them where they need to go. And then I bring in the new colors because then they're not in the way when I'm working with the colors that have to come into it. So really enjoying that. Both of these full coverage are on um, 18 count Fiddler's Ada in light oatmeal. So that's a lot better. This next one is Let's Do Wine by Imaginating. Pam from Pam and Steph at Just Keep Stitching, she was doing this and I absolutely fell in love with it. Um, so I had to get it and do it. So I am doing this one. I, the only, I'm not making any definite changes, but I am considering not doing this border. Um, I'll still do all the grapes. Um, maybe, I don't know. But the way I'm thinking of finishing it is, um, like on, I don't know, I have, I'm not committed to anything yet, but I kind of like the idea of finishing it on some like wooden wine decor artwork kind of thing. And this might get in the way of doing something extra creative with it. So I don't know, it'll be last anyway. So I've got plenty of time to figure that out because this is as far as I am. Wine, I have wine. <laughs> so which as my mom said, this is the most important part. So, <laughs> so got that in there. Um, I am doing this on 32 count uh, Fortnite fabrics. It was one of their fabrics of the month. 
I don't have the color. I don't know if it's part of their official line now, um, but it's like that perfect aged parchment kind of color. So absolutely love it. All right, this next one was part of my Stitchy Kindness from last video from my wonderful friend, Jen, and she, uh, Spoon Rooney, and she gave me um, Memorial Day from Hands On Design, one of her new-ish uh, releases. And she got me the pattern, the Sulky Pack, Sulky Threads Pack, and uh, the fabric. So I have absolutely loved working on this. I really like Sulky Threads. Um, the only thing is that what I really like about working with two strands or even one strand, if my fab when I pull the stitch through my top my top one for I railroad first of all because that helps with like getting them flat and having more coverage but I can't railroad with silky and with my with the cotton thread I like if it doesn't lay perfectly flat or it doesn't feel like I feel like it doesn't have enough coverage I'll use the tip of my needle and kind of like pet pet the top kind of like mess with the kind of um flatten out the top strand to try and like make it thicker and plumper and, and cover more of the the fabric i do that a lot especially on like 40 count because it um with the one strand sometimes it gets twisted on itself so i'll just use that and kind of like flatten it out um i can't really do that with sulky so i don't think i would use sulky personally on 28 count just because i don't think i would get enough coverage for my personal taste um but i am loving it on 32 count. So this is 32 count Lugana cornflower fiber on a whim. And this is as far as I've gotten. So I got all the way across. Um, and then I started with the words and I love, I started this on flag day cause I wasn't sure if like flag day style was a thing, but it still seemed like an appropriate day to start this. So I started this. Um, and I really like, I mean, I think it, I think it looks great. I'll see if I can focus. You can kind of see what sulky looks like on 32. I mean, from the three foot rule, I mean, it's it's perfect. Um, no complaints at all. So, so yeah, I'm really enjoying this. Wanting to get back to it um, as well. Uh, those flags are just look like they're gonna be so much fun and I love the words. So thank you, Jen, I love it. The next one was my beach start. So um, <laughs> there was a few hours, not a few hours, it was like, we were, we were getting ready to start cooking dinner and it was like a big shrimp dinner or whatever. And I was like, you know, I'm kind of done filling in for right now. And I kind of want to do something a little different. And so I brought something just in case I felt that way. And it made sense to bring this one, but I decided to start while we were there, um, a smooth sea by, uh, Emma Congdon, who is the designer for Stitch Rovia. Um, so smooth sea never made a skillful sailor and I absolutely love it and it goes perfectly in our home and all of that. So, um, so I started this, technically I started this, it, uh, doesn't look like anything right now, but I got one row in, <laughs> so I took one strain of floss. I got one, I had a pulled a floss and I, um, I, by the time when I finished this row, like mom was ready to like get dinner going. So I stopped and helped her. Um, and, and so I got that in. And then by after dinner, I was like, okay, I'm ready to get back to walk on the beach and finish this up. So I, I haven't worked on this since. It's just one row of the blue stitches, but, um, but I'm happy to have it started and I'm really excited to get back to it. Actually, I, um, there's a sow, we started a sow with uh, I think her Instagram name is Crafts Makeup Food. And she and I, um, she's making it for her husband. And so we started the uh, Smooth Sea Sal because alliterations are fun. So I'll put that in the description box below as well with her Instagram so you can follow along. But yeah, hashtag Smooth Sea Sal uh, for that pattern. So um, the June 25th was our, um, uh, I guess official anniversary, David and I, we started dating, um, I guess I haven't really told our story much, but we started dating June 25th, 2011. So it was the summer between freshman and sophomore year of high school. 
we started dating and have pretty much been dating ever since. So now we're engaged. Um, so yeah, so we're, but as everyone always tells me, I have to tell them, we were technically dated for six months in eighth grade as well. So, but we use our official anniversary as the freshman and sophomore year, uh, summer anniversary. So we, um, we met in seventh grade. So we've been best friends since seventh grade. So anyway, the, what I decided, I decided to have an anniversary start and he loves this one too. And I think it would look really good in our house is the loved by you from hello from Liz Matthews. So how sweet it is to be loved by you. So started this on their anniversary. Um, didn't get a whole lot in because after that was on the Thursday that we drove up to Cincinnati. And then, of course, the what followed suit was a hectic, crazy time. So I did not get much in. But I, um, this is as far as I got. I started on the B in by. But I'm going to do it just like she did. I'm doing it on the same count, same side fabric. And I want to frame it just like that. Um, in the 11 by 17, 14 um, frame. So, because I love that. And I know a good place that will go. So go on our, our wall. Um, oh, I have to show you guys. Okay, so, okay, one more whip and then I will show you because I think it's, it's kind of funny. Um, so the last one that I started, so I finished Celtic uh, Celebrate Summer literally yesterday. <laughs> so yesterday morning, I was able to finish up the words and or the word. And then I um, last night, you know, I was working on the on the full coverage, and I kind of got tired of it. And I was like, well, I've already ironed all of my whips, and I don't want to put them in a Q snap and then have to re-iron before my floss tube. So I use that and the fact that I am starting med school on Monday as two excuses to start tequila by Stitcherovia. I had this all kitted up and I was like, you know, this is probably a good quote, you know, take life with a pinch of salt, a wedge of lime and a shot of tequila. I anticipate there is going to be a time where this will be very relevant. So I uh, started this uh, last night I worked on a little bit this morning and as I didn't, sorry, I didn't iron it, but I got wedge in. Oh, I forgot to say, uh, the loved by you was on 40 count platinum. The smooth C was on 40 count flax. And this is also on 40 count platinum. I'm really, I'm really liking 40 count guys. I'm really liking it. So this is wedge, um, by, and then, um, it still has some more, obviously on the, the wedge has some more colors on it, but I at least got a word in. So, you know, making progress, but it was so funny. So this house I said was, was owned by, is owned by uh, two for, uh, fourth years who just graduated. So two recent graduates of VCOM and um, the wife and I are almost the same person. When David came to tour the house, he was sending me photos. And there was one very specific photo. I was like, yes, we're doing it. Yes, we're getting this house to rent because not ready. It's a blue wall. It is a teal Tiffany blue wall. You know what that's going to be? It's going to be all it's going to be my beach wall. I'm going to have a beach wall. So I well, you know, a <laughs> small version of a beach wall, but So I, um, I'm so excited. So what we're doing this weekend is all of our decorations are kind of like in a pile. Um, and we are, uh, we're going to put all of it up on, well, we're going to get it laid out and then go get the hardware and figure out what all we need to hang up everything. So, yay. Um, I guess, yeah. And then, yeah, I'm so excited. Sorry. <laughs> when I saw that picture, I was like, that's, that's, yeah, that, that, it's just, it's a sign. It's meant to be, and it's like when you walk in the, so the front door is right there. And so when you walk in the front door, that's the wall that you see. So I'm like, perfect. So anyway, um, so, and I'll show you guys maybe next video I'll go through cause I'll have stitching up there and everything. I'll do like a little beach wall, tour to wall, beach wall. Um, it'll also be motivation for me to get it up and running. Um, so those are all of my whips, all of them. Um, nothing compared to some others, but it's a lot for me. And as you can see, none of them are close to like being done. So we'll, uh, 
we'll get there. We'll, we'll talk about that in plans. But I uh, wanted to go through some stitchy kindness and some haul real quick. Uh, we'll do haul first because I just really don't have that much. When I was at Keepsakes, um, Jen showed me this and I was like, crap, I have to get it now. Um, it is the, it's art print fabric for cross stitch Misty Beach and it's 27 count even weave. So it's this like pre-printed fabric that comes with a needle minder and technically you're supposed to like, they give you the pattern it says I need some vitamin C and it like shows you where to put it. But, <laughs> um, David absolutely hates that quote. He thinks it's so corny and dumb. So I don't, I, and you know, I feel like this has a lot of a lot of possibilities. So I'm just gonna kind of wait and see what makes sense to go on there. Who knows, maybe I'll still do it and he can just suck it up, you know? Cause I like it, but I, I think there are a lot of possibilities for this. So I'm gonna hold on to this in my stash and this needle. I might pull out this needle minder though, cause I do love that needle minder. And then um, I got my Fortnite fabrics, fabric of the month. I get 32 count linen. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce the name, but it's this like, let me see if I can get the, that's pretty, it's pretty true to color. Um, it's this like green, greeny blue modeled with white uh, fabric. So I, I absolutely love it. You can kind of get a close up of it. Um, yeah, I absolutely love it. I don't know what I'm gonna do on it yet, but it's, it's great to have in the stash. And then I did join the color and cotton fabric of the month back in late May, I think is when I officially signed up for it early May, sometime in May. And I think it's closed now. Um, I don't think she has any openings right now because of like COVID and stash and, or not stash, um, supplies. It's hard to get like fabric and stuff. So she, um, so it's not open right now, but I am part of the any color uh, one and I get a fat quarter of it. And this is June's and I, it's so fun. This is what I love about fabric because I would never have bought this color for like if I was at keepsake or something, I wouldn't have personally bought it. But now that I have it, I'm like, this is a great color and I could see a lot of things on here. And that is this like, actually let me fold it cause maybe the color will come better. It's a little richer than that. That's closer. It's just like really nice, like rich rose uh, pink light rose pink color that is just gorgeous um again i have no idea what i'm gonna let's see that's closer um no idea what i'm gonna do on it but i love that i have the option for it i get the 32 count linen uh 32 count and 40 count are really my two go-to's um unless i'm doing a celtic lady then i get 28 count just because like beads and stuff but um, even then I probably could have done 32 in those, but, um, but yeah, so absolutely gorgeous. So happy. Um, I don't think it has a color. It just says any color limited edition. So it might be, I feel like I heard with color and cotton that they, um, afterwards they'll sell it later on in their line. So you might be able to check back and get this, but I don't have a color for you. So just search for this at some point. Um, so yeah, absolutely love it. So that's on my haul. And then Stitchy Kindness. Um, so when I went to Keepsakes that Saturday before I moved, um, there were wonderful people there who were very generous and very loving and who I appreciate very, very much and brought me some goodies. Um, the first one that I'll go through was Lynn, Lynn Dorney. She, um, I think she's Lynn, Lynn X Stitch on Instagram. I'll put it in the description box below in case I have that wrong. Um, but she gave me this card. Uh, it was really sweet, had a sweet note. These two needle minders, which are just awesome, which you know what that one's going on, right? It's an anchor, smooth C. So I'm gonna put that on smooth C right after this video. Um, one stitch at a time, very true, very true of my life from now on. Um, so I absolutely love those. And then two weeks Starworks colors. She gave me Ocean, which oh, I just love that. I used up most of mine with Walk on the Beach, so I'm very excited to have another skein in my stash. So thank you, Lynn. And then also uh, Bermuda from Week Starworks, which is so pretty. That variegation is intense. I love it. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but very happy to have it. It's kind of an older, 
the Xyrx. I love that. They're old. I don't know if that's older, just different. But it's cool. So, love it. But the big thing she gave me was, which all of this was inside of, was a project bag. So she made me this blue seahorse project bag. The zipper pull is this gorgeous little covered button with one of the seahorses. Just absolutely wonderful. It's big, it's a big one, which I needed. And then the inside is of course my blue. She's got the navy and the teal and the seahorses. She just got it all in a bag. It was so thoughtful and so wonderful. Um, so I absolutely love it. I already have a project in it, not gonna lie. So, um, cause project bags are, got a lot of projects. So, so yes, absolutely love it. So thank you so much, Lynn. Um, I love it all. And then uh, Candy was also there um, and she gave me a keepsakes gift certificate, which I very much appreciated. And this cute, wonderful little orc jar, which is so colorful and so fun. And what I'll always think of her when I use it because um, confession, this is my first orc jar. <laughs> I had never used one. I, don't have a reason why, just probably laziness, honestly. So there was <laughs> like floss thread everywhere because I'd cut it off and just set it next to wherever I was working. And to the dismay of everyone around me, there was constantly floss thread everywhere. So Candy hooked me up. I don't think she knew that. She just gave me this wonderful, pretty thing. And I officially put everything in here. I celebrate summer. All of the th orts were in here and I just dumped them out. But Thank you, Candy. Um, and then my mom for uh, my birthday, my parents gave me you know, a few, few other things, but the thing, cross-stitch related thing that she gave me was she made me a wine bag. So I have, she put the bottles and then cork and this gorgeous like vintage type lace. And then this is where the uh, wine needle uh, zipper pull went. Cause I gave it back to her in case she had something else. And on the inside is this gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. So, yay! Um, absolutely in love. So, so I guess you can probably guess what's in my wine bag is my wine floss for my process pattern. So, yes, absolutely love it. Um, and then <laughs> uh, Jen and Lenny had some fun and <laughs> went to God knows where, but they, um, well, let me start with the funny ones and then I'll go to the other ones. But when I came to Keepsakes, they gave me, <laughs> I pulled it out and it was this dolphin pattern, which they, they like made fun of, but you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. But the reason that they found it so funny is, Navy Ada. So they saw the Navy Ada and you know what they thought of? They thought of me because they love me. So, <laughs> so this uh, dolphin kit, don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I have it. <laughs> so, so that was the first funny thing they did. And then while I was there, they handed David, well, they technically handed it to me first, but they handed it to David afterwards. And it had, it was a box and uh, it had an envelope taped on top and it said do not open until you are settled in Auburn like bold letters and they wouldn't even give it to me like they let me read that and then they gave it to David like do not let her open this until she is settled in Auburn it's like oh man like so and then um they told David to record my reaction um when I opened it so I was like okay so I don't know if it's gonna be like a sweet thing because it could, they're just going to see me crying, but so like, oh, uh, we'll see. So, <laughs> so like the second day that I was, that I, we were here, uh, we were drinking coffee and like waking up and David's like, okay, you have to open this. You have to open this. And so I'll, I'll insert the video just because it's kind of funny. Um, excuse me how I look. Cause I literally woke up like 15 minutes before this video. So a little grace, but, um, they, yeah, the card off. Let's go do the card first. There's a lot of fierce going on here. Okay. 
Nailed it. <laughs> But you get to see my face because technology. I'm like really nervous. Oh. <laughs> I love the floss. The floss is great. At least there's three. <laughs> Prominent place in the house, huh? Okay. Dinks! <laughs> the card, the card was really sweet. The card was really sweet. Our friends, our friendship helps us to be our strongest, bravest, badassest selves. Sorry, I didn't censor, but you know. Um, and then just a really sweet note on the inside. And then when I opened up the box, it, the note said, Dear Megan, Jen and I wanted to gift you something super, super special as a housewarming gift and a memory of our time together. Hopefully you can ex display it in a prominent place so that every time you look at it, you will think of us. Love you tons, Jen and Lenny. P.S. Our only regret is not being able to see your face when you open this, but David did record it, so they saw it. And on the inside, <laughs> were these three swans. <laughs> So, it's, uh, I, I didn't really, I, that was pretty much my reaction. Um, so, these three, so we have Jen, a wise one, who I call, so I made her an owl Nino Winder, and I called her wise because she taught me so much. She was my first main friend at Keepsakes, you know, who I consistently was friends with, and she taught me so much about Keepsakes in the world of, and, and the world of cross stitch. So, we got Jen. We got Lenny, Grandma Cat Lady, and then we have me, the young one. <laughs> so, and then the, the wrapped around the flaw, wrapped around the swans, which was really nice and very generous. Actually, was um, all of the uh, new DMC colors, one through thirty-five. So they gave me a skein of each, and this was wrapped around their neck. this goes but thank you Jen and Letty appreciate it um <laughs> but then the sweet gifts so Jen had already given me a lot of sweet gifts and, and Lenny too but Lenny um on the way out she gave me another gift and she said okay you actually really can't open this you can open this anytime but not in front of me I was like okay and she made me this notebook and it she stitched in and in my colors um, and wrote like a four page, super, super sweet note that made me cry. Um, but she had originally planned for this to be my, um, like registry book for when we were going to do that, um, the stitch shower for, for me, uh, that didn't happen because of obvious reasons, but she originally made it for that. But then now she was like, you just make this whatever you want. And I was like, well, it's still going to be stitching related. So I have my whip list in here, my kitted list, my notes, like all of that fun stuff. So it's still, so now every time I write anything stitchy related, I'll think of Lenny and I always have that note to go back and look at. So very sweet of her. And then from all of keepsakes, I think put together somewhat by Susan. Um, is so, so I went to Keepsakes and why everyone is so special to me and why I talk about it so much is, you know, they had the stitch, stitch ins on Fridays, first Fridays, but they also like every Saturday, really every day, but um, you can just, you could just go and stitch and spend all day there. So, you know, when I first moved here and or moved there and then even afterwards, I would spend almost every Saturday at Keepsakes, like, I, and pretty much from 10 to 4 because, you know, it was late enough where if I had been out with my friends Friday, I could still roll in and be okay. And then it was, they closed early enough that I could do stuff with people afterwards. But during the day on Saturday, like, I was at Keepsakes. So that's how I've made these, like, such incredible relationships and friendships and, and but <laughs> people almost always brought food to keepsakes. And I have no self-control when it comes to chocolate and chips and peanuts and what was it? Peanut butter spilled pretzels or whatever the heck Lenny brought. So I munched a lot at keepsakes and I, um, 
so they would always make fun of me. And like one time Lenny asked me what was in my fridge at that moment. And the thing is, I did all my grocery shopping on Sundays. So by Saturday, you know, a little sparse because I'm going the next day and I knew I was going to be keepsakes all day. So I didn't really, you know, so I would tell her. And so she would always like force me to take stuff home with me because she thought I was like wasting away. But that Jewish mother in her came out as she, her words, her words. Um, so what they gave me from keepsakes was this basket and it was filled to the brim <laughs> of food. It had all the snacky foods, it had four water bottles, it had like two bags of chips, trail mix, Chex mix, like, <laughs> and um, because, you know, that is how they think of me when I am at keepsakes, the hungry young one who needs food. So <laughs> it was funny and it was actually very handy. Uh, we ate pretty much all of it on the 10 hour trip uh, home the next day. So thank you so much actually, because uh, we were actually hungry that day. So, <laughs> but I have this really nice basket now, which has the flag. Um, it was just so funny. I laughed for probably like five minutes. Um, it was very funny. So thank you. Thank you, lovely people. Um, and then the last thing that I was gifted was actually, um, so David's mom, my future soon to be, uh, mother-in-law, she, uh, actually called keepsakes and, uh, just told them, Hey, you know, I know Megan has a wish list there. So if you could, you know, pick something out that she would like, I'd love to get it for her. And so we, on that Saturday, I was able to pick it up. And what she did was she completely kitted up. Um, Mary and Bright from um, Cottage Garden Samplings, which I love. I mean, this was on my wish list. I have Forever and Ever fully kitted, and now I have Mary and Bright, which is my other favorite one. Um, and so she did this, all of the floss colors fully kitted, and then a 35 count dove from Weak Star. Oh, that is not. The lighting is very, it's kind of yellow. We're gonna change all the light bulbs to make them not that harsh yellow because it, it's coming out. In the correct lighting, it is that green. It's the, it's the exact called for, um, except 35 count versus 36, which is fine. Um, so it's that green, but it's under this light, it like comes out brown, which is not what it is, but. That's what it looks like. So, <laughs> so I'm very excited about this. This is going to be one of my um, winter winter projects because I absolutely love it. Um, so yeah, so thank you so much, Paula. I really appreciate it. Um, it was even funny. So she was calling, I guess she called all my birthday because Susan took the order and they gave me the piece of paper that Susan had written the order down on. And David was currently driving to Cincinnati, unbeknownst to me or really anyone else. He really only just told his mom because it was semi-spontaneous and he had to drop Tank off at his, who's a 90 pound um, yellow lab, by the way. Um, and Susan even wrote, David is on his way here now, super secret. So I thought that was really funny. So I kept that. Um, so yeah, so all the wonderful kindness, really, really appreciate it. Um, Hall is going to become a much less uh, or much smaller portion of my videos from here on pretty much. Um, I'm still part of like the fabric of the month club, so that will still be part of it. But I, um, I'm try I have, I have 13 kiddo projects and I have 13 whips. Like I'm obviously not going to, you know, not never buy anything ever again, but I do have enough where I don't need to be necessarily spending that money right now on that kind of stuff. So I'm going to, we do kind of have like hobby budgeted, ho hobby budget. So if something does come up, I'll be able to, but you know, just kind of using what I got for right now and just seeing how, how life goes. Uh, we'll see what happens, you know, when, as people still release things, cause I'm not blind, but you know, we'll just see how it goes. Um, which kind of leads me into my plans. So I am not doing technically like Jolly July with all the Christmas stuff. I am very much a seasonal stitcher. So I, um, it's still summertime and I love summertime. It's my favorite. So I'm going to keep working on summer things. Um, I think I'm going to start doing a weekly rotation, kind of how like Globetrotter, um, does. And a lot of other people kind of do those weekly rotations. I, um, I can see a lot of progress after a week and 
I really like having a focus piece because I used to be a monogamous stitcher and I was pretty much monogamous with this Celebrate Summer and I loved it. So I kind of want to go back to that, but I want to be able to work on everything that I have started or not everything, but you know, work on the things that I already have going. So I think I'm going to start with like weekly rotations of whatever makes sense for that season. So I'm going to work on, I'm still going to work on tequila. I'm probably going to work on that through the weekend, Saturday. And then Sunday, I'm going to start with um, Celtic Summer, and I'm going to work on that for the first week. And then I don't, I don't think I'm going to plan much further because who knows what I feel like stitching on next Saturday. <laughs> so I, I'm wanting, but it will probably still be something summer related. So it might be one of the full coverages. It might be like the Patchwork Quaker, you know, Beachcomber, you know, something semi summer related. And then as we start getting into fall. Um, just kind of crazy I don't have any fall patterns right now started so maybe I'll start I do have a few fall things kitted so maybe I'll start some things just to have fall going but I could also be working on my winter stuff and have that ready for winter so I don't know it's not there we're not there yet so I'm gonna try to not plan too far ahead but I am a seasonal stitcher so it kind of like this kind of naturally planned um the other thing is my video so I <laughs> As hard as I tried, I pretty much am a once a month kind of videoer. Um, well, I guess technically twice a month, sort of, kind of. Um, I got two in April, two in May, one in June. So I think I'm gonna, because I'm gonna start that weekly rotation, I will have at least four projects a month, theoretically, that I will have been work, will have worked on. And I will have gotten my monthly club clubs in. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to film once a month. I'm not sure if it's going to be the beginning of the month or the end of the month. I guess it's kind of six of one half dozen of the other, right? Because that's essentially the same time frame. But I have a feeling it's just going to depend on what my class schedule looks like. I probably will film again at the beginning of August. So probably the beginning of the month. So you can kind of see what I did last month and then maybe what I'm planning to work on the next month. I don't know, what do you guys think? That's kind of what I'm thinking right now, but we'll see. And then that way I have like a goal and I can fit, I mean, this takes, you know, a couple hours. So it'll probably be weekends that I do it on. Um, so we'll just see how that goes. But plan for it to be like once a month, I think. Um, and then that way I have enough content for, you know, for a month's worth of stitching. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. My, but my priorities right now are definitely like Celtic summer. I really want to work on smooth sea some more and beachcomber. So we'll just kind of see, I am loving tequila though. So I am definitely gonna start with Celtic summer next week. Cause I'm dying to see more progress on her. Um, and then, um, I do have a little bit of an exciting thing. So San, uh, Becca from Sambri Stitches, she um, did a video a little while ago asking people like who they wanted to see her interview and you lovely people said me. So she got quite a few comments that had my name in there. So she reached out and um, she interviewed me on Tuesday and that video will be coming out July 19th, I believe. So not this Sunday, but next Sunday. Yeah, so next Sunday. Uh, she'll be posting uh, our interview together. I got really nervous. Like, she's such a sweet person. She's so sweet. Um, we had a great time. We talked a little before and a little after, and, you know, really, really was great meeting her. But I don't know, interviews, like, <laughs> I guess because I don't do them very often, I got kind of nervous. So, um, but it was so much fun. And I, um, I'm excited for y'all to see that. So, that'll come out July 19th. And then I have a two other shout outs. So stitching related shout out is um, Stituation Normal. Ka uh, I think it's Catherine. She is, she, uh, Kathleen, starts with a K. Sorry, I think it's Kathleen or Catherine. She, she's so cute. Oh my gosh, she's, she has three videos out. One just came out a few days ago. Um, she is so fun. She's in, um, she's in Canada, I think Ontario. And as, um, oh, I'm just getting everything wrong. I'm not sure now. I'm sorry. I watched them a couple days ago and now I'm getting it all mixed up, but she's amazing. Go watch her, find out. Um, so fun. So definitely check her out. 
And uh, my aunt Barbara, actually, my mom's sister, so she does uh, she does the Stampin' Up um, business and is a amazing card maker. And I know we have a lot of multi crafters in our community, and I know quite a few make um, make those really amazing multi layer works of art kinds of cards. And so she has started her own YouTube channel to do some demonstrations, but also to talk about the business and the company and how you can get involved. And um, she just came out with her first video a couple days ago. She is Amaryllis and Rose Stampers. Yeah, Amar and I'll link it below, of course. But she, um, the first few minutes, this is her first video, her first few minutes were kind of about the company, but then the second half of the video, she does a demonstration using some of the products and how to do like a beginner's card. So definitely check that out. Keep watching or skip to the middle, whatever you want to do. But um, she's wonderful and I'm really excited to see her YouTube channel kind of blossom as well. So definitely go check her out. Um, and I'm, and if you have any other new YouTubers, I know there's like a new YouTuber Floss Tuber like every day. So please let me know of other um, other new Floss Tubers. I love watching new people as long as well with my regulars. Um, and I I, I kind of want to kind of create a routine where obviously I'm going to be studying tons, obviously, but either in the morning before class or in the evening after I'm done studying, like I wanna get at least 30 minutes of stitching in a day. I feel, it's what I did in college. Um, I know Stephanie was like, how did Megan like stitch during college? I made it a priority, honestly. I just, um, I, if I didn't stitch for quite a while, I could feel I, my anxiety would get high and I would just, I needed that kind of time to relax. So I made time to you know, every, every evening or every other evening, I would watch an episode of Friends and get X amount of stitches in, you know, and just kind of made it. And then, you know, there were times where I probably did more stitching than I should have, but you know, we passed, we're here, <laughs> we're in med school, it's fine. Um, but we, um, so I, but that helped me so much in college and I, I know it will help me if I continue it and with the stress levels and, you know, the anxiety and everything. So I still want to make it a priority. So I'm kind of, my goal is like 30 minutes a day minimum, um, you know, or, or less if that's, but something, something, you know, watch an episode. So my goal is like maybe one in, in the evening, you know, at least one I can stitch while watching one boss do video, you know, and, and with my schedule the next two weeks is kind of weird because it is all online. I'm going to be doing it from that kitchen table right there. So, you know, I don't have to get up and get all professional. It's all pre-recorded lectures. It's not like I'm attending class or Zoom calls or anything. So I'm hoping to get more stitching in these first couple weeks and then kind of get that routine down and then just kind of see where it goes. <laughs> so um, I think that's enough rambling for now. I finished everything on my list, so I will be back in just a few weeks. I, um, I'm thinking the first weekend of August, which I think August 1st is on a Saturday. So, well, except that's when my parents are bringing some things, so maybe the second. But that weekend, I'm planning to do my next video. Um, I did ha oh, I did have an, an idea for my next video, though. So I brought my mom on and we talked about all the stitching I've done for her. Well, now that I am reunited with quite a few pieces of my stitching for someone else, um, I was thinking of having uh, David come on so you guys can kind of meet him. I talk about him a lot, unapologetically. Um, so I was thinking I could bring the, those pieces that I've made for him and you guys can meet him. Um, he doesn't do stitching, but he does other, he has a few other hobbies, like does like Magic the Gathering and fishing and all of that scuba diving. But if you guys have any questions for us or questions for him, you know, leave a comment or private message me. I thought that'd be kind of fun. I know, um, like Stitch All the Things did a husband Q&A session. So I was thinking maybe for the next one, since I have, I would show those previous finishes anyway, so might as well, you know, include him. Y'all can meet him. Um, so if you have any questions for us or him or me or whatever, um, feel free to let me know. And I thought, I think that might be a fun thing for the next video. Or if you don't want to do any of that, let me know that too. Let me know like, you know, I wouldn't really be interested in that. Don't do that. So just let me know. Um, I'm always open to suggestions and ideas and 
comments and critiques and you know i'm doing this for everyone you know for me and for for you for you watching thank you for watching and if you but i want to know like what do you want to watch you know i don't i don't want to do something or or start doing something because you want it you know so you just let me know i'm here for for you guys um so thank you all so much for the support thank you all so much for your continued love and best wishes and advice and all the things I really, it really means a lot. I read all of your comments multiple times. I'm sorry if I don't always reply to them or heart them, but I do read them and I very much appreciate them. Um, so let me know if there's anything else I can do for you. Um, in the meantime, have a great stitching week, month, whatever, stitching life and, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.